dear friends postpartum hemorrhage remains a major killer in our country and contributes to almost 27 to 30% of maternal mortality in india and 70% of postpartum hemorrhage is due to atonic pph when the medical management fails we have to incorporate surgical management and the conservative surgical management that is the surgical tamponade is achieved by doing compression sutures and also by doing the stepwise ligation of the vessels of the uterus so here we are going to demonstrate the compression sutures on the uterus we'll start with bill lynch when we take the decision to do a bill lynch procedure first thing we have to do is a tamponade test the tamponade test is performed by compressing the uterus now when we are operating most of the time we are standing on the right side of the patient the left hand is placed posterior to the uterus the fingers pointing towards the cervix and the anterior wall is compressed by the right hand and compress the uterine wall at least for 3 to 5 minutes and then watch for the bleeding if this test tells us that it helps to control the bleeding then we can go ahead and apply the bill lynch compression suture position of the patient is optional either you can have a supine position or it can be even a semi lithotomy which has been preferred by professor bill lynch now to start the procedure it becomes easy if we have marked we have marked the points on the uterus to make it easy to understand the technique we have a b c d and e f points a and b are on the right side exactly 3 cm below a point and 3 cm above is the b point c and d points are on the posterior wall at the same level of the uterine incision at the point where the uterosacral ligaments are inserted and e and f are just like a and b but on the left side of the uterine incision one more important thing is throughout the procedure the assistant need to compress the uterus so that when we are placing the suture over the uterus it helps to compress and also when the loop is formed its the tension is applied so there is no need to pull the thread or the suture material at the end because that can traumatize the myometrium the suture material used for this is catgut number 2 with half circle round body 65 mm needle and the length of the suture material is 100 cm take bites on either side of the right edge of the uterine incision so first the needle goes through point a comes out through point b exactly 3 cm above the upper edge these bites are placed approximately 3 cm from the edge of the histotomy incision then loop the suture around the fundus go across the fundus of the uterus re enter the uterus through the posterior wall at point c now the loop the vertical loop across the fundus lies 4 cm away from the coronal end of the uterus pull the suture tightly but do not tear the myometrium now the suture is inside the uterine cavity exit the posterior wall of the uterus through point d and then loop the suture over the uterine fundus maintaining the tension throughout anchor the suture in the lower segment by taking bites on either side of the left edge of the uterine incision 
point E and point F. Pull the two ends of the suture tight. while the assistant simultaneously squeezes the uterus. Close the lower segment in the usual manner. And place a surgical knot. Corners of the uterine incision to be identified and stay suture is placed before the knot is tied. Ensure that when lower segment is closed, angles do not escape. So this is the vertical compression of the suture with bilinch. Modified B lynch suture is been propagated by Professor Heyman and Professor Arul Kumar. In modified B lynch suture, the, there is a transfixing of the total uterine wall. The lower segment of the uterus or the uterine cavity is not open. So, if the patient has delivered vaginally and there is a atonic postpartum hemorrhage, Heyman suture is preferred as we do not have to put a incision on the uterus. The disadvantage is that that the uterine cavity is not explored under direct vision. So in Heyman suture the principles are the same as Billinge, the same principles are followed. The needle is pierced from point A which we have already explained and you come out through point C on the posterior wall and then the thread is tight at the fundus. By a three knot technique. The assistant need to compress the uterus when the thread is tied. The same procedure is repeated on the left side. Point F and then come out through point D. If it is done after a caesarean section, the lower segment need to be closed before the Heman suture is applied. Now the next is cervical isthmic suture that is horizontal cervical isthmic suture which helps to control the bleeding from the lower segment by opposing the anterior and posterior wall of the uterus. It also occludes the placental bed vessels by occluding the anterior and posterior wall. So here the needle goes through the myometrium through and through anterior to posterior wall again to come out from the posterior wall to the anterior wall and the knot is tied. The same procedure is repeated on left side. One precaution need to be taken is to see to it that the cervical canal does not get occluded while applying the sutures. So ensure that the canal remains open.
canal is open horizontal cervical isthmic suture Cho sutures is a multiple full thickness square suture again it is applied over the upper segment which helps to approximate the anterior and posterior wall of the uterus now the full thickness square sutures are applied in even can be applied in selected areas of heavy bleeding the requirement is a 10 cm straight needle as it has to go through and through the anterior posterior wall of the uterus one did not take the square suture at four places i would like to repeat even a selected areas of heavy bleeding can be square sutured it looks it is called as square sutures after the application we can see two vertical lines on the anterior wall and two transverse on the posterior wall that's why it's a square suture the cho suture can be repeated if there is a oozing from the other side so we can take a multiple that is even two or if there is any heavy bleeding area we can take less number of square sutures so the principle of the compression suture was introduced by professor billinch the hemen suture then the cho suture as well as the cervical isthmic sutures are all compression sutures but they are all modification of original billings compression suture so these are the uh, uterine models demonstrating the compression sutures this is the original billings suture this is modified billings hemen suture this is a cho suture square suture and this is the horizontal cervical isthmic suture i would like to thank professor b lynch for coming to india and giving me the uterine model of this time when i first conducted the pph workshop and i must thank suture india for helping me to get these models to do this educational activity i would also like to thank dr vijay korvi for joining me in this educational activity of demonstrating the compression sutures on the uterus dear friends i hope that this educational activity will be of a great help to all the obstetricians of foxy which will definitely help to save the mothers thank you